Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today's problem is a woman's grandfather had glastomia, a rare autosomal recessive inability to process galactose leading to muscle, nerve and uh, kidney malfunction. The woman marries a man whose sister had glastomia and a couple is expecting their first child. And here are the three questions. Uh, Question number one, what is the likelihood that uh, the child has the same genetic disorder? And um, let me answer this first question first. But uh, as always, I recommend you to pause video here. Um, try to solve this problem on your own first. Try to answer all three questions and then you can run video again and you can compare your answers with my answers and explanations. So let me clean the space. Uh, as you remember, we have a female whose uh, grandfather um, was affected with this genetic disorder and this genetic disorder is autosomal recessive. So of course this female had a father and mother and uh, for example uh, her grandfather who had this genetic disorder was father of her mother. So now we have a pedigree of this family and we have affected grandfather here and uh, this female is uh, going to marry another male who has a sister that is affected with this genetic disorder. So, of course, these two people, brother and sister, had their own parents. And according to our problem, this couple going to marry and they want to find the probability that their future child, because sex is not known yet, we use this sign. Uh, what is the probability for this child to inherit this genetic disorder or to be affected? Not just uh, inherit one allele, but uh, this child uh, have to inherit two alleles in order to be affected with this genetic disorder because this is once again autosomal recessive genetic disorder. In other um, words, we can say that uh, this person, grandfather, who is affected, has genotype that is small a, small a, and we have to assume that all the other people who is um, not genetically related, and these two people are not genetically related, so all these people um, we assume to be normal phenotypically and genotypically because this is rare genetic disorder. So um, also we know that uh, this female here also has this genetic disorder so have to be small a, small a. So as you see uh, her parents looks phenotypically normal then uh, they have to be heterozygous for this uh, autosomal recessive genetic disorder. Uh, now we have to find probability for this person to be uh, heterozygous and for this person also to be heterozygous in order for the child to uh, express this genetic disorder these two people have to be heterozygous. Otherwise they would be affected. We know that this two people are not affected. So in order to find probability for this child to be affected, we have to assume that uh, parents have to be carriers. So we have to find probability for these two um, parents to be uh, carriers in order to find probability for the child to be affected. So uh, what is the probability that uh, this person here, this female, got a recessive allele from uh, the father and probability is 100 percent 
that this person is heterozygous because uh, from father's side this female uh, only can get a recessive allele and from the mother's side no matter which uh, allele um, any allele from the mother's side would be uh, dominant allele so we know 100% that this person is heterozygous so we can shadow half of this uh, circle to show that this person is a carrier and this spouse uh, with them to be uh, genetically not related and to be uh, homozygous normal uh, homozygous dominant so what is the probability that uh, this female would inherit this recessive allele once again from uh, father's side she only can get uh, dominant allele A and uh, from mother side she can get with the dominant allele A or recessive allele A and chances are equal so probability for her to be heterozygous to be carrier would be 50% or we can say one half or 0 0.5 so all these three numbers are the same. So now we have to find probability for this male to be also a carrier. We know that his sister were affected with this genetic disorder, so both of his parents uh, have to be carriers. In order to find probability for this person also to be a carrier, uh, we have to build a Punnett square. So here is a simple Punnett square. Uh, on both sides we have genotypes of the parents. So both of them are carriers. Both of them are heterozygous. And as you see, uh, probability would be as follows. We know for sure that uh, this person is not affected with this genetic disorder. So we can cross out this variant. And as you see, uh, this male has to belong to this group. So his probability to be heterozygous is 2 out of 3. So he is phenotypically normal and his probability to be a carrier 2 out of 3. We know for sure that he don't belong to this group. He doesn't express this genetic disorder. So his probability not uh, 2 out of 4 or 50%, uh, but we know that he belongs to this uh, group that uh, phenotypically normal, but he has a probability to be a carrier, and this probability 2 thirds. So for uh, this person to be a carrier or uh, to be a heterozygous, probability would be 66.6 percent or two thirds so now it's very easy to calculate probability uh, for the child uh, to inherit this genetic disorder so um, once again probability uh, that this person would give defective allele so Let's assume that uh, he is carrier and this female also carrier. Uh, we all define that uh, for this female to be a carrier probability is 50%. We have found that probability for this male to be a carrier 66.6% .6 or two thirds. And if they are both heterozygous, each of them has the same equal chance to give with a defective allele to the child or normal allele to the child. So this female has 50% chances to give the child this defective allele, small a. So we have to multiply 50% by uh, 50%. In other words, probability that this child would get defective allele from mother side would be um, I don't have much space left here, so uh, probability to get this genetic disorder from 
uh, this uh, defective allele from mother side would be uh, 25%, so small a allele, and probability that uh, this child would get this defective allele from father side also would be 50%, so 50% uh, of 66.6%. So this were probability to get this recessive allele from the mother side and 33.3% is probability to get this recessive allele from the father side. So because this is two independent probabilities, so uh, one probability to get uh, this recessive allele from mother side, another is probability to get from this recessive allele from the father side, these two probabilities are independent, so we have to multiply them, because these two probabilities are independent, and we are looking for these two probabilities to happen simultaneously um, in one place or in one child. So if we multiply these two numbers, uh, we are going to get our answer that is 0 0.08325 and this is going to be a probability for this child to inherit this genetic disorder. And let's check our answers. Once again we have 8% uh, here and as you remember our answers given as a fraction. So let's uh, divide 1 by uh, 0 0.08325 and uh, our answer would be 12. We have, uh, as you see, one of the answers that is um, answer C one twelfth. So this is uh, going to be our answer. So the chances that um, this child would inherit this genetic disorder is one twelfth. Or in other uh, words, uh, this is about eight percent. Now let's answer the rest questions. It would be much much easier. Uh, so next question, if the couple's first child uh, has this genetic disorder, what is the likelihood that the second child will have this genetic disorder? And the answer also would be answer C. Uh, maybe it's uh, hard for you to uh, understand why the chances would be the same. But um, I would use a much uh, simpler example. For example, imagine that a um, uh, couple is going to have a child. What is the probability that they would have, uh, for example, female or male? And it's, of course, very easy to give an answer. Uh, chances are equal. They may have a boy or a girl and chances are the same. So one half. And uh, when, uh, for example, couple already have a girl, for example, what is the chances that the next child also would be a girl? And uh, actually chances are the same because this is independent probabilities. In um, other words, if you're still confused, imagine that a couple already have a child. And uh, imagine uh, that this is Excel. Uh, imagine that they already have a female child and they are going to have another child and we are present uh, right uh, in the middle of this process. So we can see two types of sperm. One type uh, would have 22 autosomes and, for example, X chromosome. Another type of the sperm would have uh, 22 autosomes and Y chromosome. 
so uh, males produce sperm in equal amounts. So um, quantity of the uh, sperm that is uh, that has X chromosome and quantity of the sperm that has uh, Y chromosome is equal every time, every conception. So uh, as you see, uh, chances are equal every time when you conceive a child that uh, this is going to be whether uh, female or male because a female in X cell has X chromosome so male defines the sex of the child uh, whether it's going to be 2XX here so we would have a female or X and Y so this time this is going to be a male so no matter how many children and what is the sex of the children that couple already have every time they conceive uh, a child they would have equal chances that um, the next child would be with a boy or a girl so uh, we can use the same analogy here if uh, chances that this couple uh, would have affected child is 1 12 or 8 percent uh, the probability that the next child also would be affected with this genetic disorder also would be 1 12th or 8% probability because they already have affected child. If question would be rephrased uh, differently, for example, what is the probability that um, this couple would have uh, two affected children regardless of the sex because this is not sex um, uh, linked trait um, in the future. The answer would be different. Uh, we have to multiply this probability by itself because uh, these two events is, has not happened yet. So next question, if the couple's first child is normal, what is the likelihood that the second child will have uh, this genetic disorder? And once again, uh, the probability is the same. No matter what is the sex of the first child or whether the first child has this genetic disorder or doesn't have this genetic disorder, it's in no way affects um, probability of the next child to be affected or not affected with this genetic disorder. I hope my explanation will uh, clear to you and now you would be able much easier to solve analogous problems and this is all for today if you have any questions or problems that you cannot solve you may post them underneath any of my videos I would be instantly notified and uh, I would give you an answer in text format or uh, if the question would be interesting uh, I would make a video and send you a link and uh, See you in the next video. Goodbye.